minus 220 degrees Fahrenheit. That is very, very good.
asteroids capsule directly in front of the International Space Station mock-up here. It's a greenish colored capsule that I like to best describe. It kind of looks like two olives that are stacked on top of each other. We use this olive-shaped spacecraft all the way until 2020 when we begin to base it out for the SpaceX Falcon 9 Crew Dragon capsule. As part of our commercial crew program, which began in 2014, Hopefully soon now we'll have a few other companies join the same rank as SpaceX in our commercial crew program. One namely being Boeing, which is the Starliner capsule. You can see that directly to the left of the Russian Soyuz. That Starliner capsule did recently finish its last test flight needed. Before it's now able to take astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Meaning now we are just waiting on it for to take its first crewed flight. Now before we move down to the far end of our hallway here. I'm not up to here. Yeah, this is where they practice the astronaut. See, that is module. Space vehicle mock up facilities. Yeah. Oh, sorry. While that first mission will be uncrewed, it will mark the start of Orion. our Artemis program. We'll have our crewed mission scheduled to begin in hopefully 2023. Now, for that upcoming Artemis moon landing, NASA has decided to allow two different U.S. companies to design landers for us to pick, choose from, and possibly use. The three main companies that would step up to this challenge would be SpaceX, Dianetics, and a collaboration of several companies called National Team. The national Team is mainly made up of Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Blue Origin. Those three companies would collaborate and create this large two-story lander with gold foil legs, which you can see in the very center of our training facility. It's known as the National Team Human Landing System, which is a bit of a mouthful, so they gave it the nickname Blue Moon. The Blue Moon Lander was not chosen because it is too similar in design to the Apollo landers in the 1960s and 70s moon landings. Mm. That will come as less of a surprise, though, once you learn Northrop Grumman, one of those three major contributing companies, was the sole manufacturer and designer of that original lunar excursion module in the 60s and 70s. To the right of the Blue Moon Lander, you'll see what Dianetics put up for the same bid. There's a large white tube that has two solar panels coming from its roof, meaning Dianetics Alpaca. The Alpaca can house up to six astronauts, allowing them to live on the lunar surface for up to one week. However, this design would also be rejected as there was two large external fuel tanks that would be attached to the side of this lander, and then jettisoned midway through the landing procedure. This creates excess debris on the lunar surface that the other lander designs did not cause. Meaning that out of three designs, we ended up choosing the space and starship. However, SpaceX is yet to provide a fully working model of that starship, and NASA has been moving to choose a secondary lunar surface option just in case it's not done in time. Meaning these other two leaders that you see here, you have a second chance of being chosen for official NASA three mission. So we're going to have our hallway to the left, you'll we'll see a set of silver scaffolding. Picking off the set scaffolding, you'll see two identical looking robots. These robots are known as the NASA. Here is astronaut Noah. That is, this is where they practice the astronaut. They they go there inside, and they are weightless. They are plopping. Yeah, they, this is where they practice the going to the moon. Oh, they had the robot now. Yeah, that, there's the robot there. Uh, right here, on the left side. Did you see it? Mm -hmm. uh, you look here. Mm -hmm. There. You'll notice that there is a large tether that comes down from the center of the scaffolding. We can hook that tether up to people or objects and then use it to simulate the gravity of different environment by pulling against that person or object with the pneumatic hoses in that tether. Most recently, there's a controller there. We were using this 
Argo system, disconnect the gravity of the moon back. and Mars as the focus for an acceleration phase two to do mobility testing. The moon and Mars are the most likely environment that two will be operating on, so it gives us the best data for how the joints are moving, how easy it is to stand back up if you fall over, things like that. You might notice this large sand pit that we have here underneath the Argo system. That's for a more realistic ground feel as we work on, this, on the Argos. On the moon or Mars, we're not going to be walking on a hard concrete floor like on the building nine. As I pause here, I hope you enjoy our ride. Don't forget to watch my next episode and please hit the red subscribe button below for it means so much for me. Until next time, thank you so much.